I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's Word. Now, this is a new week. And listen, I want to invite you specially for, for our program on the 1st of October, which is going to be on Thursday. Now, th Thursday is 1st of October, and we are having our 24 hours fasting and prayer. Now, it's not a program you want to miss. Coincidentally, this 1st of October, our nation, Nigeria, is celebrating the 60th um, independence anniversary, <laughs> praise God. So, so we're going to be spending time to pray for our nation, Nigeria. And listen, when we pray, listen, we are the saints of God. And when we pray, things happen, praise God. So we're going to be praying on that day. And like I, like I told, we always do, we pray at every watch. We pray for 30 minutes straight on every watch. So we'll start the first prayer. I mean, it's going to be by 12 midnight on, on, on the 30th, which is on Wednesday, breaking into Thursday. And then the second prayer meeting is going to be by 3 a.m. And then 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. And then we're going to be having the last prayer meeting by 11.30 p.m. Praise God to, to end the fast by 12 midnight. Now, we've been receiving testimonies from, from the previous meetings we've had. I'm telling you. You don't want to miss this. Join, join us. Let's gather as saints of God and let's make power available for our nation, Nigeria, specifically on this 1st of October. So I would like to see you. If you want to join us and you don't have the link already, uh, you, you can send us a message on any of the platform you're watching us and we will reach out to you with a prayer because we're going to be having prayer meeting via Zoom. See? So, so that's why it's important. Wherever you are in the world, you can connect with us with our timing. And, and let's just have a wonderful time. God bless you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is sweet to receive your truth. So, Lord, we open our hearts to learn of you. And let your spirit freely give to us the things that will be beneficial to us today. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, we began to talk about life lessons from the Bible. And then we, we talked about several things last week. And I know we ended with the story of Job. And like I told you last week, we are taking stories from the Bible. And then we're going to open it up and see every lesson we can learn, every wisdom we can gather from it. Praise God. So, so you don't want to miss any of this broadcast this week. So we're going to continue from the story of Job. You know, I told you on Friday that how God protected Job. Now that's something to learn. God keeps a testimony about us. Question then is what is God's testimony about you? Now, just imagine God was talking to Satan. <laughs> now, God is going to speak truth. And Satan is going to speak facts, responding to the truth that God has spoken. See, So God said, hey, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in all the earth." A man who fears God and excuses evil. Well, that's what God said about Job. Now, God couldn't have been lying. Now, imagine, you know, sometimes you are talking good about someone and someone is there saying, hmm, you don't know this man. You don't know him. You know, sometimes you, 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 you are talking to praising a man and even the wife. The wife said, hmm, thank God, do. Hmm, hmm. But I'm his wife, oh, I know him. <laughs> Praise God. So, so the wife's trying to say, or the, whoever this person is that feels I'm closer to him, is trying to say, you don't really know him. So imagine God now speaking about a man. Who's going to be there to say you don't really know him? I created him. Come on. <laughs> Praise God. So, so God said, hey, Job is a perfect Malikibu Shayanda. Think about it. God said, Job, he's... <sighs> Look at it. Job chapter 1. You need to see this. Praise God. Job chapter 1. 
God said in verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, <laughs> Praise God. So God and Satan is having this wonderful conversation about Job. And then he says, And God says, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man? Think that. Let that sink. Let that sink. Job was a perfect and an upright man. You know, someone says, we can never be perfect. Now, this is what God said. So who are you? <laughs> it's God. God said, Job was a perfect man. Except you want to tell me this story is just an illusion. There was no real, there was no real Job that lived on the earth. But the Bible told us he lived on the earth. It's not, a just, it's not just a story. It is a story that happened. Someone is relaying what had transpired on this earth. And God called this man a perfect man. Praise God. If Job can be perfect, oh, look at you now. With the Holy Spirit in you. And you're still opening your mouth to say we can never be perfect. Come on now. Praise God. Now, this perfect, wonderful man, why did God introduce Satan to Job? Now, I want you to picture this. Now, this is something the Lord told me years ago, and, and anytime I talk about this story, that's the same example I use. Listen, now you have a friend who, uh, maybe you just came, you just traveled, or you just came from a trip, and you got some goodies maybe things to sell or things for your business. And then you got them in these bags. And then you landed in a, in, a, in a city. Maybe that's not your city. So you just landed in that city and decided to spend the night with a friend. Then the next day you go to wherever you stay. So <clears throat> you're in the friend's house and, and, and the friend puts you in a room that is overlooking the friends into the street. Now, so this is early hours of the morning maybe 5 30 a.m. or 6 a.m. when when everywhere is still quiet cars haven't started making noise so you can hear conversation on the streets people passing and then suddenly you hear your friend you hear the voice of your friend talking to someone outside the gate on the street and then you hear him say hey chief arm robber where are you coming from this early morning and then you hear the response ah bros or oh, ah okay Things have been bad, though, for the past three months. Nothing is working for me. Nothing has happened. No operation. I've not done any operation. And then you hear your own friend say to this person he has called Chief Amroba, Hey, have you considered my friend that just came from a trip abroad? He's got so many things that he came with. And then you hear the, you hear the, the, the supposed Amroba say, Ah, Will you allow me to come and rob you? How can I come and rob in your house now? Just travel for one day and you see what will happen. Now, what would you do? What would you do to that your friend? I'm sure before the friend comes into the gate, he will meet you by the gate with all your luggage. You say, bros, I'm going. <laughs> but that's exactly what happened to Job. What's the best thing you can think Satan will consider Job for? to prosper him more, or to bless him? Come on now, we know who he is. Jesus said he's a thief, and he doesn't come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his character. Praise God. So God already knew this about Satan, and then he's asking Satan, what have, have you considered my servant Job? So what is God asking Satan to consider Job for? It can only be to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the question you need to ask yourself is this. Why would God seek Satan to go into Job's life? Now, this is a challenge a lot of believers have had for many, many years. I still find believers having issues with this story. What, you know, sometimes we want to absorb God of the, in quotes, iniquity. <laughs> See, no, it, could, it can't be God's fault. God is so perfect. It cannot be God's fault. But hey, hey, it was God who introduced Satan to Job. You know what I mean by introduced? Not that 
God said, yeah, I said, I don't know Job. No, no, no. God said, hey, let's talk about Job. So it was God who drew Satan's attention now to Job. And then guess what? When, when Satan told God, ha, ah, you built an edge around him. We talked about that last week. And Satan said, take your hand off him for a moment and you see what I will do to him. So Satan wasn't saying, I want to go check him out. He said, God, the reason I can't touch Job is because there's an edge around If you just remove that edge, you will see the devastation that I will give to Job. But then, why was God having this conversation with the devil in the first place? And Job wasn't there to even uh, justify or defend himself. Think about it. At least if Job was there, well, I said that you can't come near me. If you dare, I will deal with you. But he wasn't even there. So he didn't know what was going on behind the scene. Praise God. Think about this. You know, I went to the Lord concerning this one time and I began to pray about it and said, Lord, you can't be, you can't be associated with evil. So what's the meaning of this? Is there a mistake with the translators? Did you really have this conversation with the devil? And sometimes we want to think and say, oh, no, Job must have caused this problem. You know, he said the thing that I fear must have come upon me. So Job was living in fear. No, I don't think Job was living in fear. If Job was living in fear, God wouldn't have called him a perfect man. But was Job afraid? Yes, from what he said, it, it revealed he was afraid. But then what caused the fear? And when the Lord began to show me this, this, the truth concerning this story, and I was like, oh, oh, I, I see. <laughs> you know, this brings me to this point. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach us all things. You see, sometimes we think the Bible is self-explanatory. It is not. I'm telling you the truth. It is not. It is a book of parables. And only those who have the Holy Spirit can understand the things that are written. But it's written in black and white. Yes. If you follow the stories as it is, you will end up in the wrong. See, just like Paul said, the letter kills. It is the spirit that gives life. Meaning, except the Holy Spirit opens your understanding to these things, you'll be reading it in death. So, what did the Spirit of God begin to show me? The Lord began to show me that, look, Job was a perfect man. And God had blessed him because he walked perfectly before the Lord. Which is the same thing God does to everyone who walks perfectly with him. He blesses you. Now, what kind of blessing does God give? There are two kinds of blessing God gives to every individual that walks. Now, I'm not saying someone who, who is doing well and attributes it to God. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone who, who can place, who can testify that the hand of God is truly upon his life in everything. So, now, I said there are two kinds of blessing that God gives. The first kind of blessing is the one he blesses the work of your hands. Now, that's what Job had. For Satan himself testified and said, you have blessed the work of his hands. Now, what does that mean, God blessing the work of your hands? You labor and then God God brings a harvest to your labor. Whatever you do, maybe you work at your job, he increases it. You do a business, you're a farmer, whatever you do, the, the breath of God comes upon it. And, and when you're supposed to harvest like 10, you harvest a thousand. See? And, and you don't make mistakes that other people make. And that's the blessing of the Lord. It comes on in the work of your hands. And this kind of blessing is specifically related to mammon. See? But then there is another blessing that God gives. And I'm going to start talking about that tomorrow when we're looking at the story of Job. You know, our time is up already, praise God. So listen, stay on because we, we've got to finish this. And I'm not going to rush this we are good because I want to draw out every lesson we can 
get from this story. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, this week is already blessed for you. You know how I know? The word of God is coming to you already. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.